Yeah, I, I think that's a fish on there. Nicely done, Barker. <laughs> Buzzards Bay Sea Bass oh, action! Nice. Welcome to New England Boating, I'm Parker Kelly. And I'm Tom Richardson, and today we're coming to you from New London, a thriving seaport in southeastern Connecticut, just up from the mouth of the Thames River. That's right, this historic waterfront district is a hub of creative energy, with music and art and one-of-a-kind boutiques, and at least 30 restaurants within walking distance of the harbor. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. In fact, we happen to be here during Sail Fest. It's an annual celebration that draws thousands of people to New London, and we're gonna check it out. We sure are. New England boating New London. Let's go. The uh, public docks at City Pier in downtown New London. With me is Bruce Chapel, who morning. just morning just brought up this beautiful 285 Boston Whaler Conquest from Westbrook, right? Yeah, I left Westbrook around 7 a.m. this morning. Made it here in around 50 minutes in a one to two foot chop, and we did 28 knots over the water. Nice. Joining us is uh, John Johnson, JJ. He's going to give us a tour of this harbor and the Lower Thames. Well, there's so much to see here on the river, and uh, I think we really ought to get going because it is a sight to behold. I like that idea. Let's, Let's get going. Let's get going. <laughs> Well, here at the very entrance to uh, the Thames River, we got New London Ledge Light in the background. Can you tell us a little bit about that, JJ? Sure. She's one of Connecticut's oldest lighthouses. Very strong focal point for navigation. Right. I hear it's haunted, too. Tr tradition has it that it is a haunted lighthouse. It's a real house, though. I mean, for oh, a lighthouse, yeah. it's a house, too. Yeah. It has an address on it. It's 1909. Oh, <laughs> it's the date. <laughs> So behind us here, that, that's Fisher's Island, right? Fisher's Island is right, right, right off our uh, starboard bow. Yep. Yep. And to the, to the, a little bit to the west is Montauk, Plum, uh, and Plum, Plum Gut, Plum how, Island. How long would it take a boat, uh, average boat, to, to get over to, uh, to like Montauk and? Well, a boat like, like what we're on right now, yep. um, this Boston Whaler, would take us about uh, 20, 20 to 25 minutes to get there. Yep. So New London is it just a great jumping off spot for so, all kinds of boats. For right? all kinds of, for the yeah. eastern end of Long Island, for Shelter Island for Greenport, for Sag Harbor. It is a yeah. key, key location. I mean, we got it all. Yeah. The best thing about New London Harbor is the size of the harbor and the size of the mouth of the river. There's, there's literally no um, navigational hazards com coming into the, uh, coming into the and harbor. Deep too, didn't you say? It's, it's <laughs> it, this is the deepest port that Connecticut has. Yes, it's 45 to 50 feet. Kept clear for the submarines, so they need a lot of depth of water. Right. About the only thing you might have to worry about is the the amount of uh, ferry traffic coming and going. It's pretty busy. But that's what that's what makes it an interesting port. Yeah. You know, the visuality of it is that you see submarines, you see military, you see, uh, you know, you see ships. So this is Ocean Beach? This is Ocean Beach. I love right, the name. Right, it's right really creative. It. <laughs> and it's a great natural beach, great natural sand. Yeah. This is, this is one of the few uh, few rivers in the in the country that we have no lakes so. Few harbors in the country. Few harbors. <laughs> but few can you harbors. water ski in here? No, there's obviously too much traffic, but. No, you can water ski. I've seen people water ski have in here. Have you? Absolutely. I'm not, not, not close to the shoreline. You can do anything <laughs> in here, Parker. <laughs> Behind us is uh, Fort Trumbull, obviously. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's a revolutionary fort. Now it's a 17-acre site. From, uh, yeah, it's a state park, right? It's a state park, yep. So just as you get inside the mouth of the river and just south of downtown New London, there are two marinas, right? Two marinas, right right off my right shoulder is Thames, Thamesport Marina, and just to the north is Burrs. Both of them uh, have, have very convenient fueling docks, wide open and easy to dock on. That's, that's the site of, uh, of Electric Boat, um, the division of General Dynamics, and they built submarines there. Submarines. Submarines. Now that's the, cool to bring your kids in and see, but you can't get close, right? You cannot get close, that's right. Sometimes you can see the subs when they launch. Um, they always have the launch parties right here. and uh, you know, But don't get too close don't get, get too in a close. recreational boat. Don't <laughs> get too close, particularly with a camera. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why, why would someone do that? <laughs> What a 
vibrant city. You can feel the energy in the air. Of course, it's Sail Fest this weekend, so there are a lot more people in town. But there's plenty to do, even if there wasn't a big event going on. If you walk up right from City Pier and you come up to downtown, there are plenty of signs. There's restaurants, museums, historic buildings. There's lots of different kinds of shops. I'm going to go check one out right now. So sometimes it's fun to just poke around in a little gift shop. Well that was fun, a funky little shop I got to try some things on. Just steps up from the pier. continuously operating custom house. If you came by a ship, we could take you down. <laughs> so I'm here with Captain John Edgington. Yes, that's right. The yeah, captain right. of the Mystic Whaler. Tell us a little bit about this beautiful ship. The Mystic Whaler is a reproduction of a late 19th century coastal cargo schooner, uh, the type of vessels that were the, the tractor trailers of commerce in the days before we had uh, highways and rail systems. And now she carries a precious cargo, which is passengers. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, She was built in 1967 uh, specifically for passenger cruises and New London is our home port. We do everything from three hour long lobster dinner cruises to five day overnight trips and everything in between. And so how, what's the very, very farthest that this ship's been, you think? Well, this ship has been to St. Thomas uh, before I was involved with it in 1968, 69. She did cruises out of St. Thomas in the winter time. The farthest I've taken her is Norfolk, Virginia, where we go every fall. How long is it? How tall is it? What are the dimensions of this baby? Uh, on deck, she's 83 feet. The sparred length is 110 feet, and uh, the topmast is 90 feet off the water. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Captain John from the Mystic Whaler. Make sure you get down here and check this out. with New London Mayor Daryl Finizio and we're standing here on City Pier, one of the places that have been recently renovated on the waterfront. Daryl, you've done a marvelous job here. This looks this looks great. Well, this was a, a real achievement for the city. We have uh, several floating docks that are frequently utilized by recreational craft, but we also have an entire mooring field that was put in in our harbor, which is one of the only deep water ports in this area, so it's great, and we're right off of the Block Island Sound, Long Island Sound, so it's great sailing water, great winds here. So for recreational craft, this is a great stop, uh, particularly if you're coming up from New York to Newport or New York to Boston. New London's the place to stop. If you come in on a boat, it's truly an amazing downtown because it was built as a whaling port. Uh, if you look at the street designs of downtown New London, they come out like a wagon reel right from the point on which we're standing. So all of the great art galleries, museums, performing arts center, uh, the hygienic art co-op gallery and art park, the Custom House Maritime Museum are all within a half mile walking distance of where we're standing right now. Yeah. Well, a lot of the focus on New London uh, tends to be on the historic part of it, but the modern day New London is, is very hip. It's got a lot of great restaurants, a lot of festivities and events. Well, we are currently preparing for Sailfest, which is our annual event uh, where we get a number of tall ships that do come into port and some smaller craft, recreational craft, and we have a very large street festival with rides, attractions, and then on the Saturday night, uh, of the three-day weekend, we have one of the largest fireworks displays on the East Coast. It really is terrific to see a city reaching out to recreational boaters like this. New London is also a place that's very welcoming to everyone. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the traditional uh, sense of a, of a waterfront city. This is a great waterfront city, but it's also a city that truly anyone can come to and feel at home. So I invite, uh, and you invite, the recreational boater to come down and, uh, and check it out for yourself. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thanks a Thank lot, you. Mayor. Wonderful. Welcome, welcome.
We're standing in front of Fort Trumbull, located just south of downtown New London and overlooking the mouth of the Thames River. And right now we're gonna get a tour of the fort with seasonal park supervisor, Grace Carver. which is the third Fort Trumbull to sit on this site, was built between 1839 and 1852. The south part of the property was given to the state and we opened a state park in 2000. I gotcha. The grounds themselves are open 24-7 and they're free. We have fishing down at the pier 24-7. Um, it's a really great park. I've always been fascinated by it when I'm boating in and out of the, the Thames River, so let's go inside and uh, take a look. Absolutely. <laughs> yep, so this is the courtyard and it was just the central area of the fort. I reload these windows that you see, there would have been a cannon, mm -hmm. as well as up top we would have had cannon as well. Mm -hmm. Fort Trumbull was prepared for a land-based attack. We only had one protection coming from the entrance, but if you came by a ship, we could take you down. <laughs> um, the special thing about our fort is that we're done in the Egyptian Revival style, and there's no other fort that's done in that. So the entrance to our fort looks like an Egyptian tomb. Yeah, it does kind of. Yeah. Yep. Wow, check out this view. We call this part the ramparts, and we would have had cannons all along the top of this fort. On a clear day, you can see it all the way over to Long Island, um, so you really had a great view of the harbor. Well, that wraps up our quick tour of Fort Trouble State Park. Thanks a lot, Grace, for uh, you know showing us around the showing us around the place. Absolutely, <laughs> that's great. Well, well, come on down and, and see the fort yourself. It's a real quick side trip if you're keeping your boat in downtown New London. But in the meantime, don't go away because we got a lot more coming your way, including a tour of Ledge Light, also a visit with a local marina, and we'll grab a bite to eat at a local dock and dine. Stay tuned. A lot of people say he's my grandfather, but you know, that would put me at about 120 years old. <laughs>
Wow, we made it. I can't believe we're actually out here at Ledge, Ledge Light. Light. We're on Ledge Light. I've always been curious about this place, and we're here. Thanks, Todd. You're very welcome. <laughs> Best view in town from Ledge Light. I would say. It, absolutely. We're out here at the mouth of the Thames River uh, at the end of uh, Long Island Sound here. Well, let's go inside and uh, check out what's inside the lighthouse. Oh, come on in. Sounds good. It's an aid to navigation. It's a functional lighthouse, but it's also kind of uh, a real active uh, educational facility as well. This mural was done by the last group of keepers who was uh, stationed here uh, in 1987, and one of them uh, wrote the last night he was here, Rock of Slow Torture, Ernie's Domain, he's the ghost. Uh -huh. Hell on Earth, may New London's ledge light shine on forever because I'm through. I'll watch it from afar while drinking a brew. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that enough. So it's romantic, I guess, yeah. until you're here for, you know, a year and you hear the horn all the time. And uh, there's a lot of work. Maintenance has to be done. Things have to be polished. The light has to be oiled and kept and all that. But there's a lot of downtime, and the keepers say if you didn't read books or play a lot of Monopoly or fish or paint or something, you'd go crazy. Yeah, I'd probably be fishing a whole lot. Yeah, <laughs> very good fishing out here too. And you had lunch at, at Scott's. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's here's the there is the That's descendants. That's Captain Scott. That's Captain Scott. Basically, you're punching a hole in the sea yeah. and trying to fill it in and build a big yeah, so, uh, so they built. So they basically constructed a big metal caisson or and floated it out sunk it down and filled it. So that's Thomas Scott and built it. And it was really an engineering feat. Uh, this keeper, Rick Bonanno, who was here in 1559, lives in California and said he'd love to come visit. But I happened to say to him, you wouldn't have any, have any pictures of your life out here. He said, well, as a matter of fact, I do. It's fabulous. Um, so he sent these pictures in a shoebox. It really gives you a charming insight into sort of the day-to-day -day life. This is it is charming. Look, he's playing the guitar. And they're shoveling ice. It's shoveling this is ice. Not something I'd want to be doing. Wow. Um, they're raising puppies here and they're watching TV and goofing around and you know. I can't believe uh, you got these photographs. That's amazing. So it was a real treasure and he's coming out in August. He can't wait to come out. Those are waves. Must have looked like it. Well, even worse, the waves came over the top of the building. Good. So it actually flooded in the first floor here and washed out eight tons of coal out to sea. Came up, the keepers went up to the second floor, the windows were starting to blast in. They finally took refuge up in the lantern room. And this is where they helped. Store. It yeah. helped. It helped find them. Well, they can come to the New London Ledge Lighthouse uh, Foundation's website, which is www.ledgelighthouse.org, and find out about tours and the restoration work we're doing, and even volunteer opportunities out here at Ledge Light. Oh, great. Thanks a lot, Todd. It really You're is. Uh, what a treat. <laughs> More of New London coming. Crocker's Boatyard on protected Shaw's Cove, tucked in just behind the railroad swing bridge and just south of downtown New London. I'm standing here with Sam Crocker. He's the fifth generation of Crockers to run the boatyard. Sam, tell us about the history of the boatyard. When was it first uh, established? The boatyard was first started in 1881. Wow. So it's one of my great great grandfather. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So it's one of the oldest boatyards in the whole country. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. And today, it's obviously uh, you guys are thriving. How many how many slips do you have here? Uh, about. 230. 230, yeah. huh? So you're pretty busy. Yeah, floating docks. Tell us some of the other amenities that you offer here. We have an indoor pool, mm -hmm. laundry facilities, clean heads and showers, yeah. Wi-Fi throughout the yard mm -hmm. that we just installed last month, and a fuel dock, including diesel and a pump out. Kayak racks over there. And we have dinghy racks at the top of each pier, mm -hmm. free abundant parking. And the protection here is amazing. I mean, uh, you, you don't have any of the problems with wakes or anything no. like that. No. Actually, last year during all the hurricanes, when they happened, people brought their boats here to stay protected. So how far away is it uh, from downtown? From downtown, it's about a five to 10 minute walk, mm -hmm. a couple city blocks. Do you keep slips open for um, for transient boaters? We do, we have slips up to 50 footer. Mm -hmm. All right, anyway, from 19 to 50 footer. Yep. All they have to do is call the bridge, mm -hmm. and then they call us on channel nine, and then it'll be most likely me that comes down and helps Great. us out. Well, you heard it from Sam Crocker himself, Come on down. If you're a boater in the New London area looking for a great protected place to stay, call Crockers. They're just inside the railroad swing bridge in Shaw's Cove. They'll probably have a place for you. What a whirlwind tour of New London we've had over the last couple days, huh? Indeed. And what a bustling, interesting city and seaport. Yeah, it is. And think about uh, all the great things they've done to welcome 
motors here. I mean, they've got these, uh, they've got the slips at City Pier. Yep, the 41 moorings. Yep, the 41 moorings and also the dinghy dock and the facilities down at Custom House Pier. Yes. I mean, it, they really, really uh, rolled out the welcome map for motors. They sure have, and there's lots to do. I mean, look at what we did. Yeah, I, I mean, think about it. We went to the New London Ledge Light. Mm -hmm. We uh, took a tour for trouble. Yep, and we uh, went aboard the Mystic Whaler, and I was with uh, Captain John. Yeah. Sailing the big ship. That's right. And then we had a great harbor tour with uh, JJ. That's right. I mean, there's lots to do here, obviously. And to learn more about boating in New London, as well as other great New England boating destinations. Or to find out where we'll be next week. Check out our website, newenglandboating.com. Until then, I'm Tom Richardson. And I'm Parker Kelly. See you next time.